Bienvenue à cette conférence de presse des Canadiens en compagnie du nouveau vice-président exécutif aux opérations hockey, M. Jeff Gorton. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this Montreal Canadiens press conference. Today, we are with the new EVP, Mr. Jeff Gorton. Je vais maintenant passer la parole à M. Gordon pour une déclaration. I will now pass it on to Jeff Gorton for a statement. Thank you. Bonjour à tous. C'est avec beaucoup de fierté que j'ai accepté le rôle de vice president des opérations hockey avec les Canadiens de Montreal. La plus grande franchise dans la histoire du hockey. Avec les bouts de ramener la Coupe Stanley et Montreal. Merci, Jeff Molson, pour ses confiance. I hope that was okay. <laughs> I am learning, and be patient with me, but I, but I will try to learn, okay? Um, thank you to Jeff Molson for trusting me with this opportunity. Um, Working for the Montreal Canadiens is a dream uh, for anybody in hockey and, uh, and is a position I will not take lightly and look forward to. And uh, thank you for everybody for welcoming me. It's only been a couple days, but uh, it's, uh, I went to Laval the other day and, and saw the American League team and, and everybody's so welcoming and last night at the game. So uh, thank you to everybody. Um, thank you also to my family for their support uh, in this uh, move and always uh, being by my side. So. Um, with that, um, I open it to, to, to you guys. On va maintenant commencer la période de questions. Pour être juste euh, envers tout le monde, on vous demande, s'il vous plaît, de vous limiter à une question par journaliste pour commencer. So, in order to be fair with everyone, please limit yourself to one question per reporter. Martin McGuire, première question. Uh, good morning, Jeff. Good morning. A simple one to start. Why Montreal? Why this opportunity, this opportunity was the right fit for you? Career. Right. Um, well, first of all, it's the Montreal Canadiens, number one. Um, it's, it's original six. It's the city of Montreal. It's the history here uh, of this franchise excites me. Um, with my background, uh, it seems to be a path I've somehow found myself on with the original six. And uh, once I spoke to, uh, spoke to Jeff Molson, um, Uh, talked about uh, what uh, his thoughts were about uh, where the organization needed to go, what they were looking for. It, it just felt right, the right fit for me. And uh, so here I am today. Eric Angles. Hey, Jeff. Congratulations Eric. and welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, when you spoke to Jeff Molson, he said there's a specific direction you need to go in. What is that direction? What's your vision? Um, well, I'll, I'll say this. The team's obviously had a tough start to the season. You know, I recognize that, and Jeff and I, in our conversation, we went through that. Um, but, it, you know, I, I think it'll evolve over time. There's obviously things that have to happen here. Um, I would say that uh, if you look at some of the teams I've been around and, and been part of, we want to be fast and skilled. Um, we need probably uh, to, to work on our player development here. Um, Uh, I'd like to add to analytics. There's a lot of different things I'd like to do. It's my second, third day here, uh, so I'd ask you to give me a little time on that, uh, how that plays out. Um, but uh, I think over time you'll see, uh, you know, uh, my philosophy play out. Sorry to break the rule right away here, but you, you've uh, been speaking very briefly and have asked for patience, both on learning French and yeah. Do you, you also went with the Rangers, asked for patience with the fans when you guys set off on a rebuild. Yeah. Is that a type of communication you feel perhaps needs to go out to this fan base, given what you saw last night at the Bell Center with the jersey getting thrown on the Yeah, ice? yeah. I mean, I think, listen, I think we want to be transparent as possible. Um, but like I said, I, you know, I want to come in here. Last night is the first time I've seen the team live. Um, so I mean, I'm heading to Nashville today. Like to seize the team uh, some more before we make those kind of decisions, um, but I look forward to, you know, spending more time with the players and the coaches and and, and see where we're at, and then we'll we'll go from there. François Gagnon. Welcome to Montreal. Yeah. Hello. Patient for French, maybe not as patient for the results, but uh, that's another story. Um, if I would have ask you, what would be your first five priorities? Could you already go from one to five and tell me where you want to work 
the quickest, what's the first five things that you want to fix? Yeah, I mean, five would be a lot right now. I, I think I really want to concentrate on, on being close to the team and, and understanding the players and the coaching staff um, and also the, the support staff, you know, scouting. I spend some time with the scouts. Uh, I need to do that. Um, so there, there's a lot of things that go into it. Um, and, uh, you know, as, as we move forward, um, you know, we're going to have to, you know, select uh, as, a, as a group here, we'll have to select a general manager. So that's there too. Okay. Arpin Basu. Oh, yeah. A um, couple of things you, you mentioned, I just was wondering if you could expand on um, improving player development. What does that look like to you? And adding to the analytics staff, what importance do you place on that? And, and how do you see that happening? Do you, do you foresee a department in that area? Or what, how, do you, how do you see that? Yeah, I think starting with the analytics, uh, I would like to, you know, I think we need to build that out better uh, to modernize it. Um, I do believe uh, in analytics, and I think that uh, the way the game is gone, I think it's a big piece of, of, uh, of information that, that you need to have. And so I would like to build out a staff that way. Um, and, and yeah, player development, I, I think that uh, um, they have a couple uh, gentlemen in place that are doing a good job. I think that uh, we need more. Um, to you know the way they, the game has gone, the way the, these kids are, uh, they need uh, help in, in a lot of ways. As, you know, as soon as we draft them and or sign them, so uh, I'd like to build that out a little better too. Alexandre Gascon. Hi Jeff. Hello. Welcome to Montreal. Uh, Jeff Monson said Monday that in an ideal world, uh, the next GM would have a skill set that will complete what, what you bring to the table. So. What would be those criteria? What what is the skill set that might be a, a good fit with what you bring? Yeah, I think obviously somebody that has a, a real, uh, you know, a great knowledge of hockey, of, of understanding of how the business works. Um, you know, I, I think we'll look at everything. I, I think what we want to do as a group is is we want to look at all the candidates and uh, and pick the very best based on. You know what they have. Maybe they don't. Uh, maybe it's a person that doesn't have a ton of experience as a general manager. But what else do they have that they can bring to the table? How else can they help us look at uh, different scenarios? So we're we're going to look for somebody with uh, maybe a little outside the box that uh, that can help us move forward and and maybe compliment me. Marc Defoy and Martin Leclerc. Yeah. Oh, hello. Uh, talking about candidates, you already have one. Who made it officially that he's interested? Yeah. You must have heard about Patrick Roy. Uh, I've heard of him, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is your first of all? What was your, your reaction when you heard about it? And what do you think of a guy who you know, he really wants to, you know, he really wants the job. He, he really wanted. He feel that he can bring something to the table. Right. So, what, what is your take on? That? Well, I mean, first, I have a tremendous amount of respect for him, um, for what he's done in hockey. So, um, and I know that he's always been an emotional guy and, and uh, speaks his mind. So, um, listen, I, I think, like I said, I, I don't want to answer this every time, but I, I'm just getting here and getting a feel for the organization. And, and uh, you know, as we move forward and talking to Jeff and, and, and figuring out how we're going to go about uh, picking that general manager. We're going to look at everybody so uh, that, that, that we think could, could be a fit. So I'm not going to rule anybody out. I'm not going to say yes to, or no to anybody. Um, but certainly Patrick Y, I, I heard that he, that he made that statement. I, I know he's a passionate guy. Uh, I know a lot of people that know him well. And, have, and, and I have, you know, obviously a lot of respect for somebody like that. But if I may, would you mind to work with an emotional guy like him? You went. You you've been in Boston. Yeah. Okay. Cam Neely wasn't president then. He was player. Yeah. And uh, you know some people don't like the way uh, uh, Patrick acts. You know. You know he's very emotional. But you knew a guy who was in Boston, Cam Neely. Right. As a president, he's pretty emotional too. He's, he is. You yes. see him on TV, mm -hmm. and you know he's gonna throw a bottle and yeah. know, slam the table yeah. and everything. I mean, yeah. to answer that, I, I really, I'm not scared of anything. You know, I think that uh, we want to hire the best person that can help us win, um, that has some ideas um, and can, you know, like I said, complement, you know, my skill set uh, as much as possible. Martin? Jeff? Yes, hello. Yes. 
Is that the kind of uh, structure that you want to replicate here? Like with you having the kind of role that John Davidson was having with you uh, as a general manager? And, and when you were the general manager with the, the, the Rangers, were you in full, full control of the, right. of the job? Right. Well, I think the, the game has changed a little bit now. If you look around the league, you guys mentioned Boston and Toronto. You see a lot of two-man, you know, complementary systems that everybody's working in collaboration. That's, that's I think, what we're going to strive for. Um, so, listen, I, I've been a general manager. I, I believe once we hire a general manager, that general manager is going to need some, some authority to make some decisions. And I believe with my history and, and the amount of time, my experience in the game, I think I'm going to be a pretty good asset for that person. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I'm it attracts me to this position. Um, as far as in, in in New York as general manager, yes, I had you know authority to make decisions. Um, you know the way it works a lot in, in hockey is y you build out your staff. You 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 want to have guys uh, people you trust, and uh, and you make your decision based on your your inner inner circle. And I think every team is the same. There's you'd be surprised. There's there's not a lot of teams that are making the decision one person. So uh, we'd like to build that uh, that that uh, tandem and and uh, make decisions as we move forward. Guillaume Le François et Stu Cowan. Hi Jeff. Hi. Uh, so from from your time in Boston and New York, what uh, what what emphasis would you put on on local players, players from 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 the area, and and what's your read on on, on the importance that, that this has here at this market? Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously this is a unique market, uh, and I understand. I certainly understand the need for for. Uh, to look at local players, and and uh, if you look at my history in Boston, we've always had guys locally in New York. You know, we're lucky to get uh, Adam Fox. He's from there, um, so it, it's something that I, I definitely think is uh, is important. And uh, and in this market, for sure, you know, I understand the importance. Stu, Jeff, welcome to Montreal. Congratulations. You grew up in Massachusetts, I imagine, as a Bruins fan. You can correct me if you're. Uh, oh, that's correct. Wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I just, uh, what do the What do the Canadians as a franchise mean to you? Maybe what's your earliest memory of the Canadians? And going back to your childhood, in a way, does it seem a little strange, maybe, sitting here today with the Canadians pin on your? Um, y yes, and yes. Uh, you know, being from Boston, of course, you know the Canadians broke my heart a lot of times. That's my first memories. Uh, like 1979 probably sticks out as the as the first one where you know things were thrown in my house, uh, you know, with the too many men on the ice. Um, um, so I go, you know, go back, you know, as far as coming into the game and 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 traveling and 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 being a part of the Bruins uh, organization coming up here, and and seeing all the uh, you know great players around and. And uh, the history and just everything that you know, going, coming to game in Montreal was special, and you could feel that right away. And and uh, you know, who wouldn't want to be a part of that? So, Marc Andre Perrault. Did I miss a no, uh, third part? It's crazy. I'm quick. I was going to say, what what's your best quality as a hockey executive? Well, I I think probably knowing people and players. I think that's. That's probably it. I think that I, I have a good feel for, for players, and I have a good feel for people. Marc-André Perrault and Jonathan Bernier. Hi, Mr. Yeah, hello. I just wanted to uh, be specific on, on one thing before. Did you say that you will actually talk to Patrick Roy? I said I will. You, listen, we're, we're going to – I haven't uh, – I don't, do not have a group yet that, I've, that have, we have chosen to, to talk to. Um, Jeff Molson. Uh, and I will talk more as we go along about that, about the group, uh, and then we'll go from there. But I don't want to commit to anybody. I don't want to say no to anybody. Um, so people can keep calling me if they like. Okay? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah it's okay. Uh, you were here uh, last night. You saw that, that jersey thrown on the ice. And yeah. You know, it's a passionate market. That if you could speak directly to, uh, to the fans, what would be the, the message to them right now? Well, Listen, you, you never want to see that happen. I, I think it's, it's it's obviously disappointing to see someone throw their jersey on the ice, um, but you know something that's out of our control. You know, my first concern and my thought is to the players, and 
you know, people that are out there trying their hardest, and, uh, and you know, it's a tough thing to see. So um, I would, you know, I would say anything to, to, that that is not going to help the situation. And but again, we can't control it. So, um, so as far as where the team's at, obviously it's been a difficult time, right? We all can see that. Anybody in hockey can see that it, it's almost been a perfect storm against Montreal with all the injuries and and everything that's gone bad. And now you have COVID. And it just seems like it's adding up on them. Um, it's it just it, it's just uh, it hasn't started off great. I would say that if you know, walking into this building, you can tell that it's it's a uh, the, the energy is a little down. The 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 attitude is a little bit, uh, uh, you know, it, it hasn't gone great, and you can feel that when you walk in the building. So if I, I hope that I can bring some energy and and some positive uh, way of thinking that we can turn this around um, and and move forward. So that's you know one of my short term goals is to, is to try to talk to all these players and and understand what's going on and so we can move forward and, but listen they, they they've won 6 games in in 25 so i, I understand the frustration um, but so the players are feeling it i can tell you that just from being here for 2 days Jonathan? yeah hello welcome to montreal uh, I still try to understand the organizational uh, chart of this team with you and the GM. Uh, you said you're going to be involved in the GM selection. So are you going to be his, uh, his boss? Yeah, so uh, like I said, I I've been a general manager. And for me, I, I think it was important when I met with Jeff Molson that the general manager has a direct line to Jeff Molson um, that can make decisions. Um, my role is to use all my experience to help that person and uh, to, to help make this team better again and start winning. And that's how I look at it. I, I, if anybody that knows me, I don't have a huge ego. I'm not worried about titles. Uh, I've never been worried about that. I just want to help, you know, I want to be a hockey decision guy. Uh, and I think I can really help, uh, you know, this team move forward. Let's say in the three or four years, things don't go well. Yeah. Uh, will you have the power to fire the GM? It's going to be Jeff Wilson decision. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I've never been really, I don't think I've been in an organization where you made a decision like that that wasn't at the ownership level too, right? So, you know, for sure, you know, listen, I'm not going to think about if it could go as bad, you know, I'm going to think about how it's going to go good. Okay, so we'll go that way. John Luke. Um, well, it's, it's a, it's a multi-year deal, I'll, I'll say that. That's, a, that's all I'll say. John? Okay. Hi, Jeff, over here. Well, yeah, Montreal. Uh, congratulations, John. <clears throat> Can you just describe the process that you went through that led to the decision to start a rebuild in New York and how it was communicated and how you might apply that to Montreal should you come to that conclusion once you've made a full assessment of the state of the organization? Yeah. Um, you know, it, it got to the point in New York we had some really good teams and, we, you know, we, we made it to the finals. We, we went to some conference finals. Um, but based on, you know, where we were at and our team was good but not great, uh, we had internal meetings and decided that was the way to go and that was right to the ownership level. And we decided that it was the right thing to do to, to tell our fans um, exactly what we are going to do. And, uh, you know, basically we wrote the letter and, and you know, the rest is a little bit of a history that that uh, you start. We traded a lot of players, a lot of good players, away, and uh, and uh, you know here here it is. I guess what three three or four years since the letter. So the the rest, I guess you could probably figure out. But that was the process. We we met, we discussed it, we decided to do it, and you know we we were uh, pretty open and and transparent with the fans. So as far as bringing it here. Um, if, you know, that's what we decide, um, we'll be pretty transparent, yeah. Pat Hickey? Just, uh, just wondering, uh, just on the, on, the, uh, on the organizational chart, <coughs> yep. you're the executive vice president, the general manager, Jeff Wilson said the general manager is going to make the decisions. Yep. You have six or seven years' experience as a general manager in, in both Boston and, and yep. New York. You're going to have someone working on, with you uh, who has no experience at all as a general manager? What happens if there's a if there's a disconnect between the way you're thinking and the general manager thinks? Yeah, well, listen, I I, I would encourage um, 
somebody with different views and I, I would go in wide-eyed to understand that that person um, might think differently um, and you know that's that's better I think that that uh, everyone doesn't agree with Jeff Gordon um, so I think when we are out in that search we're gonna look for somebody that has different views that has a different background um, that, that can compliment me so listen uh, Anyone that's ever been in a hockey room has had some fu fights with people about what to do, and at the end of the day, you you, you make the you make the right decisions as a group, and you you move forward and you live by those decisions. So it's not going to be any different. Marc Antoine Godin. The individual makes a, makes the wrong decision. Well, I mean, let's hope that doesn't happen, right? Um, you know, again, this is my press conference. I'm just getting here. You know, I'm thinking positively that uh, we're going to make good decisions and. And, uh, the t and we're going to move this team in the right direction. So uh, we'll let you guys uh, decide if it's a good decision or not. Marc-Antoine Godin and François-David Rouleau. Hello, Jeff. Hi. Um, I'm sure the complete the final assessment still needs to be done, but you've had discussions with Jeff leading to today. So when you look at the overall team, with a team that has more three plus year contracts that are in the books than yeah. any other team in the league and where the team is in the standings how do you what's your general view of how to unclog that and trying to make this more of a flexible roster and a, a roster that can be improved because it seems as though in terms of salaries the team's is tied right now yeah no i think that uh I think as we move forward, there's definitely going to have to, you know, we're going to have to look at everything, and uh, there's there's definitely there's definitely contracts that are that are long term um, that we'll have to look at and discuss and and figure out who who's going to be here and who's going to be part of that going forward. Who those players are, you know, like I said, you know, tomorrow will be my second game with the team, so I still want to get a real feel for this team um, and moving forward and the players, their personalities before I just, you know before we decide what's going to really happen, okay? François-David. But I understand what you're saying about the, the cap, yeah. Good morning, Jeff. Bienvenue. Nice effort in your opening lines. Uh, to clear the question, I will try to learn French. What does that mean? Is it to learn a few words or learn through the language? Well, I mean, I would like to, it's, it's, uh, I would like to be as, as good as I can. I, you know, I'm gonna. My wife has bought me uh, some some lessons online that I'm starting, <laughs> um, so I will do the best I can. That would be my pledge to you. Um, I can't say that I will speak the language fluent because I don't know how good. I, I, 30 years ago, I I wanted to be great at golf and I still stink, right? <laughs> so it's it's. Uh, I, I will do my best. I will pledge that to you. Um, you know I, you know I've been working hard on what I said today and I had to read it, but I. I think I did okay. Hopefully, I can move forward and build off that. Okay. On va prendre quatre dernières questions. We'll take four more. We'll go with Patrick Friolet, Alexis Bélanger Champagne, Eric Leblanc, and Claude Guillet. Hey, Mr. Burton, welcome yeah. to Montreal. Uh, you insisted on the fact that you want the GM that's going to be able to compliment you. Okay. Uh, considering your strengths as a hockey businessman, what do you feel would be the best skills to complete you as a team? Um, that's a great question. Um, I, I think I, I really want to, you know, we want to focus on finding somebody that, you know, that that has uh, just a different different outlook on it. So, listen, I've been in hockey my whole life. Maybe it's maybe it's uh, it could be an agent. It could be, you know, it could be somebody that was just a player. It could be it could be somebody, but somebody different than me. I wasn't a player. I wasn't an agent. It could be just a different background. Um, so we're going to look at those things. Um, I, I've, I've read some of the names. I've heard some of the names. I've had some calls. Um, but I want to reserve, you know, we want to reserve uh, judgment on that until uh, we have a little more time to, to, to figure out uh, who might be out there, and, and then we will find the best person, okay? Alexi. Hi, Jeff. Hi. Hi. Um, you can talk a little bit about player development earlier. Mm -hmm. Jeff Molson in his press conference on Monday mentioned the 45 draft picks over the last three years, a ton of prospects coming in. What's your philosophy regarding that? You mentioned just adding more staff, but what are you looking for in player development? Uh, what's the, the kind of uh, things you want to offer to those prospects to help them grow? 
Yeah. No, I, I think that help them through, you know. I, I think once we take them, it's important to be in contact with them. It's important to talk to them every day about um, their game and, and how they can get better and nutrition and any, anything we can offer them, um, the communication. Really, from the moment we, we draft them until they reach the NHL, I, I think we, we can do a better job. Uh, every team can really do a better job of, of working with these kids and, and bringing them and, and turning them into men and, and, and eventually good pros. So it's just it's really just the, the day to day, um, you know, contact and, and keep those relationships because these, these, you know, listen, it's a it's a high pressure game. Um, there's a lot that goes into this for these players. And we want to help them, you know, as much as we can get there as soon as they can. But but I think that we could do a better job of supporting them and, and adding to that and having the right people in place for that. Eric Leblanc. Hi, Jeff. Nice to meet you. Uh, since you got hired, you've been able to talk to a few people in the NHL, and uh, their opinion is that because the experience that you have, the GM that you will hire will only have a small word to say on every decision. What is your reaction? Yeah, I mean, I would say no. I would say that we're going to bring a general manager that's going to have a say, and it's going to be the general manager. And uh, being a general manager, I, I would – You know, I would not want to be a general manager unless I had, I had the the, the power of a general manager. So, um, that's that would be my answer in the short to that. Claude Guillet. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Knowing that you wanted a GM that might be outside of the box, you said might not have a ton of experience. You being a GM yourself, how will you? How how can we expect that? Will you be the one still in touch with the other GM, considering that the next one might not have your type of experience? Will you still be in contact? How will those negotiations or any contact with other team, will you still be involved? Um, yeah. I mean, my answer to that is the general manager will, the general manager we hire is going to talk to the general managers around the league. That's, that's part of the job. Um, yeah. So for me, uh, I would say that Once we find somebody in place, you know, my role, and for now, that's what I am doing, talking to general managers and holding down that. Um, but as we go forward, you know, we're going to empower the general manager to, to talk to GMs and, and, and uh, try and make deals and, and whatever it is. Um, but listen, I think they're bringing me here for a reason, to help, right, and use my experience and, and help that person. So um, I'm, I'm confident that we could, we could find the right person Um, we can work in tandem and we can move this thing in the right direction. We'll take a follow-up from François Gagnon. Uh, just a quick one, Jeff, to finish, please. Uh, going on a time frame base here and going in, instead of over, under, I'll go before or after Christmas. Okay. A GM, before or after Christmas. Well, I would say based on, what day is it? It's been, December, it's been a crazy week, so. Yeah, oh, we're in December. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I would say if you're giving me the over and under, I'm going to say after Christmas, okay? Uh, I mean, I think that uh, that's, that's to be determined. I wouldn't want to give you a date yet. And finally, is your coach safe for the entire season? Yes. Jeff, merci beaucoup. Jeff, thanks for your time. Welcome to Montreal. Merci à tous. Bonne journée à tous. C'est ce qui conclut la conférence de presse. Merci.